Due to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. He is a comic book nerd. In brightest day and darkest night. We can learn a lot from comics. She is a reality TV junkie. No idea. Look, he had her baby. A dollar makes me holler. Chris likes sci-fi. They keep your, they do a brain transplant into this whole new body, but it's you. Kristen likes celebrity gossip. Breaking what do you news. Oh, more breaking news? Uh-huh. Special. Special. was just a rumor. These two, our pets, moved back in together. What do they have in common? Nothing. You're listening to Two Strangers, One Podcast. Now, here's Chris and Kristen. Well, hello and welcome to Two Strangers, One Podcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Kristen. Still the voice is gone. The voice is still gone. It sounds like I smoke it, like a... It's two days later smoke. to the audience. Yeah, but, it's, but it's really the same day we recorded the other one. <laughs> By our next episode, I should have my voice back. So, that, that's how we'll, that's how you'll sound if you start smoking. So I guess. Oh, really? Really? It's kind of sexy. I kind of like. I don't know. <laughs> I like. I kind of like the scratchy voice. I don't know. It's like, hey. I guess it's Demi. Yeah, Demi Moore. It's so it's hard on my chest. It's hard to speak. <laughs> that's what she said. Hey, hey, hey. You think gay guys say that's what he said? No. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to ask. So I was telling. I was right as episode's beginning. I was telling Chris. And I was like, "Not. I want to keep the beginning, as in, like, I want to keep the intro guy, but like, we gotta update, change our quotes. update the quotes." We so. gotta wait till I gotta wait till Kim has her baby, so I can oh. have another baby. Kim Kardashian had her baby. When, how many months are they? Oh That'll my be god! Soon, right? <laughs> She's uh, well. I mean, I don't know. Because you you posted a picture of. <laughs> Kanye. My Facebook photo is, if you Google it, I know I've seen it in the past. I don't know who made it or what. Uh-huh. But it's basically how Kanye and Kim will look when they let themselves go. Yeah. So it's a couple photo and it's them bigger. And it just looks, it looks natural. Yeah, there's people, There's uh, there was a website dedicated to it where they took pictures of quote unquote Hollywood starlets. Right, and made them. And made them look hefty, you know. Yeah. And, and, and that's what it's from, yeah. And these photos, some of the photo shots were really good. <laughs> and, uh, legit. and, you know, when you give the person, and then they'll, they have like the comparison the, like here's the picture we, we based right. it on and it's you know be, it'll be you know I'm just going to throw a name out there like Christina Aguilera at a at a red carpet event and she's there and then the picture right next and they have you know with the cankles and the double chin and and, and you know the Your average American boobs you know the boobs that are like going sideways instead of you know like filling out like blocking the arms and it's like um, do we know yet? Because I've heard conflicting stories. Like, is it a boy? Is it a girl with the Kardashian? Oh, um. Because like at first they said girl, and then they're like, well, boy, and that, I, I they're just being dicks. <laughs> <laughs> I think the last official, honestly, I mean, that I heard was it was a boy. Oh. That's like the last official I heard about it. I'm surprised. Well, then again, I mean, I'm not. So they kind of went back and forth, and I was like, well, what the fuck is it? And yeah. then they never like really clarified. Yeah, first it was going to be a girl, and then, or you know, what if it's what if it's like twins or something <laughs> like that, like a boy. And a girl. Oh my God, that's. (laughs) Well, I mean, you know, it's it's because didn't didn't some other celebrity have a boy and a girl recently? Or maybe I'm twins. A twins boy and a girl. Some other celebrity. (laughs) One of the one of the crop of celebrities. Oh my God! Um, for some reason, okay, real quick, there was there was a commercial at the movie theater, and I, you know, me being the sci-fi guy, this was totally off my radar. Will Smith and his son, uh, I saw them, Jaden Smith, in a movie called Af- After Earth. Oh okay, yeah, I saw them doing photos, whatever, in some other country, and it was like for promotions for that. Yeah, one, it looks absolutely horrible. It okay, looks they, like I'm not really, shit. I'm not really into them. Yeah. And then, like, it, not for nothing, it's a little too close to the Tom Cruise movie that just came out. Um, Oblivion? Oblivion, where it's, like, the last people on Earth. And it's, Will, now, they're playing father and son. Weird, that's just sad. <laughs> Did they play father and son and... Oh, what's that one where they stay in the, they live, like, in the bathroom yeah, of a train station? Oh, my God, yeah, and then son gets a job at the end. I don't know. Pursuit of Happiness. Pursuit of Happiness, yeah. yeah. It was, like, a depressing movie. Yeah, and this, well, this one I guess it's it's science fiction, and and it's called After Earth, and I don't know if like I don't know if they're on a planet that's I don't know if it's supposed to be Earth a thousand years in the future else, that like or like planet. all of human civilization. I think I think it might be something to the effect that like I think humans left because like maybe we couldn't live here anymore, and now it's like they're coming no. back or something like that, and like but he's what like. Was the movie he was? <laughs> And he was he was, he was uh, the last man. I am legend. I am legend. Yeah, so it's like a, it's a mixture of I am legend <laughs> and oblivion. Probably, yeah. Wait, so, stereotyping you, or well, you know because I mean 
you know, Will Smith is kind of getting sucked into that whole Scientology I world, so I wouldn't be surprised there's if... There's an approve, approval for, uh, I don't know what number it would be, Men in Black 4. Men in Black 4? Wow. What number they have Yeah, no, they were on 3, and 3 was horrible. Okay, so 3 was yeah. so bad. There was a, so, yeah, he must be on this whole science kick. I want... I, let me tell you, I wanted to like it. I wanted to like Part 3, I and I was... I wanted Parts of 2. Yeah. Well, I remember, 3 came out recently, right? Yeah. Like last year? Yeah. I remember the big hype. So yeah, that was, it was... It was it, and it was a letdown. Like, I mean, you know, I loved part one. You know, saying I like action, you know, kind of like Iron Man. Like, I like yeah. action and comedy and, you know, of course, a little science fiction, you know. That, that. It was goofy. But two, two kind of fell off, and then three was absolute trash. And it's like the special effects are fantastic, but there's no, there's no compelling, the story was boring, it was, you know, then you have the villain, but then, like, the, you know, you could tell, like, they have these great special effects, but then when the the villain. I want the villain to not look like a human being. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole. It's a movie about aliens. <laughs> right. You know. Got this human being and the human being's the bad guy. You know what I'm saying? Oh, they gave him a wig, and it's the guy from Flight of the Concords. He was the oh, bad yeah. guy. <laughs> you know, and he's 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 been good in other movies because he was he was great in Dinner for Schmucks. He was good. There's a movie called um, Gentleman Broncos. I think it is. It's one of the same guys who did Napoleon Dynamite. Uh, he was good in those movies. You know what I'm saying? And you would think Men in Black. Okay, you know, big big budget. Da da da. And the movie was just. Maybe a little. Men in Black 3 was trash, so hopefully... 4 will be... <laughs> 4 will be better. Now, um, speaking of 4, and trilogies and, you know, stuff that they're doing Transformers 4. Hey, uh. they've, 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 <laughs> they've, like, officially announced it. Uh, not officially, but... Um, Is Megan Fox going to be in it? Because no, I heard her and the director... Absolutely, no, nobody... Resolve their conflict. No, they resolve their conflict, but it's, it's a whole oh, new... Yeah. It's about... I, the way the way it's sounding is this movie is going to be about the main character is going to be a girl, but her boyfriend's a race car driver. Okay, Herbie fully loaded. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, right. Herbie did, you know, kind of you know communicate and move and stuff it's like that. Fully Herbie fully loaded. And we're yeah. Taylor Dagan. <laughs> now, if they brought back Lindsay Lohan for Transformers Four, like, that would be man, awesome. <laughs> That would be, that would be awesome. And then remember, oh, you know, because Herbie was a, a bug, the VW bug, <laughs> back in the Transformers, Bumblebee originally was a VW bug. They made him a, they made him a Camaro in the other movies. I saw a combat. <laughs> oh my God. He only strictly works with bugs now. <laughs> <laughs> only car, cars only with, uh, movies only with VW only Beetle. Only Herbie. <laughs> you know, uh, years ago, uh, BMW and I mentioned this on the past episode. They did they did a whole like mini movie thing where they were promoting their new car and, and they, they did. I remember part three was called uh, it was called the driver. That was called the series. It was called the driver oh. and it was mini movies and it was actually directed by um, Tony Scott who passed away last year. It was mm-hmm. suicide, who committed suicide last year oh, yeah, yeah. and it was with James Brown. Uh, oh, yeah, I remember you, you talking know, about Marilyn that. Manson, Gary Oldman. Yeah, but great, people. great movie. So why not? Why wouldn't? Um, Volkswagen do one, but then again, uh, actually, I know why, because uh, Michael Bay made those movies with GMC, though, so that's why there was a Camaro and a, you know, and a Hummer and uh, and all these other, you know, yeah, like, like the the truck that was actually, (laughs) American (laughs) made, American, you know, Michael Bay, Jesus up, (laughs) Because he was, before he became this big action movie director, he directed car commercials. All right. So Transformers is right up his alley. You know, he, he knows how to, the angle, the he right, knows how to light the, the cars. Now, the, now, you know, the funny like thing the cars, is, take yeah. a shot, is that, you know, now he's working with guys on computers. When before you were in a studio with lights, he's working right. with guys on computers and, like, light sources and reflections and all this other stuff. So Transformers 4 is coming out. Nobody from, no human so actor. Was that made? Is no, there previews out? Oh, no, 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 no. It's not, no, it's not made. I, I think. I right think now. they're doing principal photography right now, or they're or they're just so about. So you just to, mean like maybe stills or something? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure um, they're probably going to bring back the computer characters because all you got to do is just do their voices. Yeah. Now that being said, the guy that played. It's Lindsay. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and that's, they had they had one female in the comics in the original cartoon. There was a female named RC, and they had RC in part three for like three fucking minutes. 
You know, saying like you know, I mean, you know, re- represent. They need to have know, um, the girls got little boobies with the guys. Girls to look need, at. girls we need, need something to look at. We robots. like cars. You know, girls. we like stuff. We need a female Autobot. Bring back RC. <laughs> so RC now, um, so RC was in the in the movie for five minutes, but I mean, I think why you know you got a bunch of young guys who like action movies. Why not have oh, a big tit robot? You know what I'm saying? And sex, the robot. sexy voice, and you know, you get the Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay Lohan. Well, because she has the scratchy voice. <laughs> <laughs> she has I can just do it, okay? <laughs> yeah, Kristen, we gotta Let get you job. We gotta get an agent for your voice actor. <laughs> but, but Hugo Weaving, the guy who played, he was in the the tra- uh, Matrix movies that mm-hmm. he played Agent Smith. He was the voice of the main bad guy in all those movies, Megatron. Now, uh, what, what a lot of fans got pissed off was that Frank Welker was the original voice of Megatron in the cartoon. Now, Frank Welker, Welker did voices for other characters in the in the movie, but not Megatron, the main character. Now, Hugo Weaving came out and basically said, and he goes, and it's not insulting Transformers, it's not insulting Transformers fans. He goes, he goes, I I didn't I don't know about Transformers. It was this was the first project that I ever did that I didn't know or even care about. He goes. You know, he goes, he goes, he never met Michael Bay in person. He goes, they had one Skype conversation. Oh. Um, it's he, everything's done now. It's like nothing's in person anymore. Yeah, when you see the guy's directing the movie. They were talking about some music collaborations. I've heard a few people, like, just a couple of people. And they're like, yeah, I collaborated with them, but never yeah, met them. They all, were across the country. They email. recorded their part. And then I recorded mine. We never even met. Yeah, <laughs> all the digital like, stuff like that. With uh, uh, Metallica did it. I know it's going to... Uh, What's his name? Ja Rule mm. did a song with Metallica. I never met. And they never met. Because mm-hmm. they still... That's so common. I was like, that just seems so... It's like you're lying to me. When I'm listening <laughs> to the song, and you guys are jamming it. No. The, beautiful, the beauty you know? of digital recording that... And they're like, yeah, well, we never met. Yeah. You, got one, <laughs> you got one studio, West Coast, one right. studio, East Coast. Another country. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then they just... I mean, I guess if I could talk to Cordero yeah. from yeah, Living yeah, Lane. Just, whatever they got. <laughs> the beauty of... Uh, <laughs> And so everything, so uh, Hugo Weaving basically said, he goes, he goes, you know, there's a lot of, you know, movies, a lot of production. He goes, I was in the studio for two hours and I left. <laughs> and he goes, and that was all, that was the end of my involvement in each movie. Yeah. So, like, he, people are not broad. Yeah. He's like, I don't know. It's, it's, I, I took two hours out of my day. <laughs> and you would think in three movies, right. he would have met Michael so, Bay once, you know, at a red carpet or something right. like that. So that, being, <laughs> so that being said, you know, people, like, uh, you know, he gets approached by fans, but he's like, he doesn't really know slash care about the Transformers. And he's like, I'm not insulting the Transformers. He goes, he says, this is the first time I ever took a project that really wasn't something that I was familiar with or comfortable with. Or, what, or not comfortable, that's not a very good word. But um, I'm wondering and I'm hoping that they'll bring Frank Walker in, <laughs> you know, because cause they had, Peter Cullen was the guy who did the voice of Optimus Prime, and you can't, and, yes, and, and, and like every version of the cartoon, and later on there was, he was pretty, I mean, they kind of, uh, some of the shows, they went in different directions, but he's the voice of mm-hmm. Optimus Prime. But if they brought back Frank Walker, and not for nothing, he's probably cheaper than Hugo oh. Weaving. <laughs> Hugo Weaving's doing blockbuster movies, you know. But he, you know, Frank Walker works probably for you know whatever voice Lunch. actors, you know. <laughs> now, don't, Frank Walker is probably the top of voice actors, but that's oh, probably like yeah. a fourth of what movie what a real, actors, uh, you know. Hollywood blockbuster actor, you know. And not that it's not a hard job. And, and Frank Walker, who's done, if, look up his IMDb page. You'll, it's it's freaking. He literally has. He probably has thousands of gigs. Um, but, you know, bring back, you know, do the bring fans back. service and, and bring, bring back, back Frank Walker and, and yeah. you know, Important. and that's the beauty of digital, you know, you can make a million movies with the digital characters, like everything, huh? everything saved on a, a bunch of hard drives, you know, you could have, you could have eight Transformer <laughs> movies, I mean, I guess, you know, as long as they're good, but... Don't good for a Michael Bay movie, I guess would be the better best there way to go. put it. You know, I like you know I like Michael Bay even I'm pissed off what he did to my Transformers go. and what he yeah. what he's gonna do with the <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But all right, uh, I digress. <laughs> I digress. What do you got for us? Uh, USD fighter, and I'm probably gonna butcher his name. Uh huh. Shayel from Golan. Mm-hmm. Shayel Sonnen. He legit. This is like his PR person said. This was a true statement. He's not joking. When he retires, he wants to buy WWE. And so uh-huh. right now he's looking at investors, and it's about half a billion dollars is what he's got to come up with wow. in order to buy it. I don't know who he is, what anything, but well, I feel like it can't be taken out of the, well, what's I, their names? Uh, the McMahon. Yeah, that's, like that's them. Wrestling is traditionally a family business. Right. You know, so even, know. you know, the old school guys. Now, 
when WWE turned into an IPO when they went public on on Wall Street, and you know, mm-hmm. and I was I've, I've been a fan of wrestling for years. You know, I remember when that happened. Yeah. You know, Linda McMahon ran for like. Congress in, <laughs> in Massachusetts, or, so, I, or I, I forgive forgive oh, my yeah. ignorance, but she, for you know, she she was running for like political office. Mm-hmm. Now, um, not so shortly after WWE went public on Wall Street, um, and and like Forbes magazine even like you know like Vince McMahon was valued at a billion dollars. Right. Like he's yeah. making bank. Yeah, and they and and they promoted it as Vince McMahon. You know, they would call him, you know, the million dollar boss and all the, you know, the, I mean, the billion dollar boss, billion you know, dollar. you know. Yeah, uh, we're not even a million. Yeah, a million, billion yeah, dollars. a million, <laughs> that's pocket change. Um, but yeah, they, he was, he was like officially valued at a little over a billion. And then, like I said, they ran with that in wrestling. Oh, yeah, a billion dollar billion boss, dollar. you know. And, and so um, I'm actually surprised that it's only half a billion. Mm. To buy, not that they would sell it. Invest. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Like, are they even talking maybe ha- about it? Maybe if you got half a billion to, to have a, 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 a controlling interest. Yeah, maybe. You know, or know. something like that. But yeah, he wants to own it eventually. But I don't know. Yeah, I feel like it's strictly yeah. family. This is who I trust. To run it right, yeah. Because so I don't know if this guy even has any relation to them, like friends, or yeah. he's just out of the blue. Like I, that's that's too. that's pipe dream. I guess that's one of those things like when yeah. you're a kid, like oh, I'm gonna buy, oh, yeah. I'm gonna buy the school and tear it down. But you like, know. I guess he's legit looking. He could an investor. Like, well, I guess forward. if he if he buys shares, yeah. now that they're IPO people, he buys half a billion. He has controlling interest. I guess technically, okay. maybe they'll put in some UFC moves. <laughs> well. I mean, sh- honestly, well, I mean, I, I mean, because Shane McMahon, Shane McMahon is Stephanie McMahon, Stephanie McMahon, Vince's kids. And I, I don't, I, I don't know if he has more, but I know, you know, Shane and Those Stephanie the were the ones that were in the spotlight. Yeah. Shane is the freaking spitting image of his father. Oh yeah. Stephanie actually is kind of, Stephanie kind of looked, you know, you can see her dad's face, you know, like those are no, those are no doubt Vince's kids. <laughs> um, they, you know, they're very involved behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Shane and Stephanie, they were literally raised in the business. They, you know, they, they don't know a life outside following dad around and, and going from town to town and touching you know, muscle you know and a lot of guys now you know <laughs> oiling up the, <laughs> the cast oh boy Kristen's <laughs> liking that oil them up. <laughs> yeah imagine that you know being you know a 16 year old girl around all these horny muscular oh, yeah, guys I feel like she virginity early. yeah she's married to triple h for yeah, christ's yeah. sake you know what i'm saying like you can't get any more what's his name jean paul the vest jean paul <laughs> So <laughs> Stephanie, oh, and it's funny, she does. I, to the, I mean, I guess publicly, she's not Stephanie McMahon Levesque, you know. She's, I, mean, I guess. Probably, did she change it? No, no, she's still Stephanie McMahon. Oh, you know, but just probably business. But I mean, legally, I guess. Well, I mean, I don't. It's call me, call me old fashioned. Yes. It would be. It would technically be Stephanie McMahon Levesque. But yeah, I, I, the, I, and honestly, and, and you know, especially Shane, because Shane has his father's killer instinct. I mean, I guess Stephanie has a killer instinct too, because she married a fucking wrestler. Like I'm pretty sure, well, you know. And, and what's gonna happen when, when, cause, okay, now you got Shane and Stephanie gonna run the company when Vince goes in the ground, you know. And then what happens when Stephanie has kids with Triple H? Those kids are born and bred, and you know you can't get Do any they more. Have kids or not? I don't think so. Those kids are genetically predisposed to be wrestlers. They you come know? out like it's twelve pack. Yeah, it's a, you know, and Shane wrestled. You know, changes their own diapers. And let me tell you, I guess you know because. That being said, when Shane was when when Shane was at the height of his wrestling, and I would say about ten years ago, it was like around 2000s, 99, and it's a two, like around like 98 to 2003. Mm-hmm. That was around the time Shane was like really involved. Shane was doing hardcore stuff. Yeah. He called himself like the hardcore champion or whatever yeah. because just to um, give yourself your own nickname. You can't do that. Yeah, he was <laughs> because he had something to prove. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, not yeah, like I'm the not just boy. yeah, I'm not the like boss's son. The boss. <laughs> so you know, he wrestled his like one of his main like hardcore moves. What he likes to do is he would somehow get the guy knocked out in the corner. So the guy's like kind of sitting in the in the corner. Um, he was really knocked out. Well, not you know, <laughs> knocked out in You're wrestling terms. Is that real? Oh no, yeah, it's just real. So <laughs> then, dad or my dream? So you got the guy kind of like hunched over in a corner. He would take a garbage can and put the garbage can in, one just next to in the front room. of the, well, you know, all the hardcore matches. You got to bring out you know tables, ladders, chairs. Those are always just next to the ring. Yeah, garbage <laughs> can. Kendo, I love a kendo stick. So you know, you know what a kendo stick is? It's a, it's this piece. Of, I believe it's bamboo. Okay. And what they do is, okay, now imagine bamboo is like, <laughs> it's not bamboo is a shaft, <laughs> and they cut long lengths On the sides of it. down of it. Yeah. So it kind of opens up a little bit, yep. and that's just like the natural uh, shape that it's. 
So when you hit somebody, it, the the the, pe- the slats close together yeah. as you're hitting the person. So you're getting like you're getting hit like you twice. Oh, okay. you know? And so they call that a kendo stick. So I can understand you could almost even get away with in a public venue a table, a ladder, a chair, even <laughs> a being <laughs> even a garbage can. You could kind of say, okay, look, well, the crew needs a garbage can. A kendo stick? Who the hell? Why? Whoever needs a kendo stick? Yeah, the audience has kendo stick. Give me a stick. Yeah. So they, oh, I love. When you see oh, them go yeah, under like the ring, ski, an ice skate. An ice skate. <laughs> oh yeah, the most ridiculous. A stop sign. What the hell's a stop sign doing under the the, the, the wrestling ring? Because everything's like, under the wrestling RBJ ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's ridiculous. Oh, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You know, how did that get here? You know, the baseball bat with spikes and barbed wire around it. What the hell? You know, <laughs> what do they call the Molotov, Molotov cocktail? cocktail. <laughs> like, what? Who made that? <laughs> yeah, this just happened to be under the ring. Oh look what I found! <laughs> Medieval times, you can't like those things. Yeah, the, the maces. <laughs> Amazing, a broadsword. So yeah, it's so uh, so so Shane. Now, mind you, I do have to give him credit. This was on the long part of the ring. You know, the rings are re- a rectangle from one end. So he'd get the garbage can. He would get the garbage can. So and from the long end, on the long end, no, no, he would jump from one turnbuckle to the to to like where the guy's on the floor uh, and kick into the garbage can to get wow, kick into the guy. That is a which, when you really think about it, the garbage can's a crumple zone. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The garbage can takes all the, all the damage. <laughs> but it looks cool. And yeah. that was, like, to prove that he's... Did he ever miss? He, either the garbage can or miss the guy. He, the he, 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 he like, that. basically, like, tapped the garbage can a couple <laughs> times. And then the person in the it corner like has to react like, you know, yeah, like, they just ooh. got hit by a truck. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so... I, Back to you know if the guy I guess if the guy wanted to buy controlling interest but Shane and Stephanie and then they, I mean, Stephanie's future kids really, they're not gonna really sell him like it's gotta be a huge yeah they're know, not going anywhere huge PowerPoint that he makes up and yeah there's too much ego there's there. gotta be so, like he's gotta really sell yeah I can't see him owning it that sounds way out of line but like maybe being a partner silent partner or yeah like I said maybe controlling interest that's right. the only like thing if you buy some aspect like of it fifty one percent of the country well, owning it sounds a little and I'll be honest with you I would I would be surprised if Vince would even allow there to be 51%. Right. He probably has the 51%, yeah. you know. So maybe just if he had 5%. Yeah. So 5% in that business, you're making bank. Yeah, because it's it's all live shows. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that, that's where you make the money. People coming in right. for tickets yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. You know, it's I mean, really, okay, yeah, I mean, they, I mean I'm mean, i pretty sure they have the, one of the best crews in the world, you know, when it comes to tearing down and, Stunning you know, up. I mean, that's, that's union. Okay, I'm pretty sure they're probably, they're probably <laughs> paying, the they're probably paying good money for for the union guys, but those guys do a terrific job mm-hmm. tearing up, tear, you know, oh, tearing yeah, down, putting you, up. I feel like if you make a mistake and it all goes to shit, like something glasses, yeah. you're pretty cut through, you're out of the union. <laughs> and you know, and I've been We're to, gonna have to let you go. <laughs> I've been to a couple events. You see, like, see like them. literally, as soon as the show's over, you see like oh, yeah, a freaking like, swarm of bands. Like, we well, gotta leave. <laughs> and so uh, get everybody out, we're going. That's what I'm saying. Honestly, the crew is probably time. the most expensive part of it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, like really, I mean, besides yeah, because come on, what the superstars, but you know, super. But are they disposable. Make, and they make a lot of money, though, like, with the tickets. Like, oh, yeah, that's... You know, so, like, it's kind of like 50 video, like, oh, yeah, we're bringing the superstars, but we're, get, we're paying them, but we're getting money back. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's so pure it's profit. mostly, like... What they really have to spend money on is the people. The crew. <laughs> and the truck drivers. I'm pretty sure that's all union. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, merchandising, yeah. all the toys, and, and you know, then they got all those shows. There, there's, it's even on Spanish TV, because I know that I, I catch oh, the, 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 yeah, I, I catch, I, the funny thing is because I don't have cable, so I miss Raw, but if I wait till Wednesday, <laughs> I can watch the Spanish version of Raw <laughs> <laughs> on the Spanish station. Um, which is, you know, it's the same wrestling matches, you know, you know, really, you know, I don't really, I don't watch, you know, I mean, I guess you could watch it for the commentators or really who does, you know, um, so that being said, and you know, whenever, whenever, whenever anyone's talking on mic, they're talking in English. It's not like they translate that, you know, so, um. Yeah, you can watch it on the Spanish channel if you, if you don't have cable. You don't have cable. Wait till Wednesday. Yeah. You know they got advertisers. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're People, making fans. yeah, a pay pay, just a pay per view every month. Every yeah. month is another freaking pay per view. Fifty dollars a household. <laughs> so, I mean, the, I mean, the guy may have a pipe dream of buying it, but I don't. Uh, it ain't going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, because it's not like he wants to own it. You might be shooting up here just so you can get shot down to here. Yeah. That might be your plan, which is fine. Yeah. But I don't think you're going to be owning it. Yeah, because, I mean, yeah, well, I mean, there is that crossover, like, um, oh, my God, uh, Brock Lesnar. Mm-hmm. He, went, he went to the USC for a little while, right. and now he's back in now wrestling. He's back. Welcome back. You know, I, I'd rather fake 
fake fight people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> UFC, you know. I mean, UFC is relatively new, but you know, like. I don't want. I don't want to see these guys thirty, forty years from now. It's going to be sad. I mean, you know, look at Muhammad Ali. You know, best in the know. world, and you know, the guy could barely hold his hands still now. So it's like, I can only imagine what these Ultimate Fighter championships. Oh if they don't, you know, and, it, and plus, yeah. it's kind of like a rock and roll lifestyle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure. Well, like, the, well wrestlers have go out and very few wrestlers die of natural causes either. Oh, I know. Everyone's always, you know, <laughs> crashing into a tree or overdosing on heroin or not, over, well, not over, overdosing like on painkillers yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. You know, for so long. And that, that that horrible tragedy that Chris Benoit when he went he committed suicide, killed his kid, yep. his wife, and then he killed himself. He you just know, wasn't right. a lot of these you know, a lot, the wrestlers head. don't get old. You know what I'm saying? Right. You never see the 90 year old wrestler. Yeah, walking you around. really, really don't. And then, and the ones who are, I mean, you do, I mean, like, right now, we recently passed WrestleMania, and the older guys, and when you listen to the older guys, have the absolute cleanest lifestyle, you know what I'm saying, because yeah, they, yeah. they spent their lives rocking and rolling. Their bodies already been through enough. Yeah. Like, if they still live that way, they wouldn't be there. Yeah. It's, you know, these guys are <laughs> chilled out. They got their system, know. I guess you could say. And they got the grandkids, mm-hmm. they got, they're just, so, so, so UFC guys, I'm just saying, is like, you know, give it another 30, 40 years to see those UFC guys. It's not going to be pretty. It's I, I hate to say it. I mean, I, you know, I like UFC, but it's... <laughs> no, yeah, you're right. All right. Uh-oh. Kelly. Chris, Chris Cross. Oh, Chris Kelly, yeah. Uh, uh, the Mac Daddy. Yeah. Because there was... Mac Daddy make you want Yeah. Cause, no, no, because there, the, there was the, the Daddy... Daddy. There was the Daddy Mac and then yeah, the Mac yeah, Daddy. Yeah, he was Mac Daddy. Mac Daddy, the darker one. <laughs> I guess I, uh, you know, I hate to say. I'm looking it, at a photo. Of the, yeah, darker one. the darker one, because one was the little. Yeah, because the kid was like, I, what is, I think cause I'm not? turning 36. I think he was like 34 or 33 I think, I or something. In his 30s, yeah. Yeah, he was like he was, he's in his early 30s. Like mid 30s, yeah. And and they were showing like videos, which I don't think they really should at least, but I think he he was still rapping. I don't oh, know okay. what he was, whatever, but um. Like videos, like YouTube videos of him like rapping, but you could tell he's just fucked up. Oh. Like you shouldn't really, be going that. you know. Like, yeah. With some respect. It's in bad taste. You know. Hey, you so know. I guess he yeah, obviously had a drug issue. Yeah, but I mean, he did the freaking Anna Nicole Smith show, so I mean. <laughs> Couldn't somebody intervene on that? I mean, what the hell was that? All well, about? the thing is, like, you know, I mean, I know it's bad on YouTube, but I mean, it could have. Yeah, it could have been a really um, bad taste. If he had a bigger name, yeah. after it would have. <laughs> Mac Daddy in the house Mac or something. Like. <laughs> Mac Daddy in the house. Or Mac some, Daddy making you jump. <laughs> yeah, make him jump, then, on E. Right after R-I-B. Chelsea Lee. Guess who's got a new single? Guess who's got a Pop new song single? I haven't heard. I just read about it. Pop song single. So I'm sure. I'm it's assuming it's someone that's not into pop. I don't know. <laughs> Tanning Mom. Tanning Mom? Her name is like Patricia or whatever. Uh-huh. And it's called, this is real creative. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's Tan Mom. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I, that's, I just read it because I was like, I don't want to click it to even hear it. Oh, so God. I'm sure it's auto-tuned, her talking, not singing. <sighs> and it's called, it's Tan Mom. <laughs> it's Tan Mom. <laughs> it could have been like a remake of Walking on Sunshine or something. <laughs> 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 like, that's why you're so burned. Yeah, right. <laughs> Or like a beach song or, like, or something yeah, like that. Like, like, like uh, on the boardwalk. <laughs> California <laughs> girls, actually. That'd be a nice twist, you know. Beach baby, beach baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I'm sure that's going to be a hit. Proud of her. Oh, um, and just in time not, for the, yeah, just in time for for the, the tanning season. Yeah. You, you, I don't know. I'm you, tan. Yeah. <laughs> and you, I strive to be her. You, you gave, you, you get, you, you, I learned a new term for you today. Fake and bake. You never heard that? I've never heard oh, that. Fake and bake's better on, um, better <laughs> on for me. <laughs> Yeah, I had the wedding this past weekend, and I was pale from... Yeah, you got to get color in here. And so I had to wear a dress and show my legs, and I was like, I can't. i got to have some. Let's at least add some color. I can't be this pale. <laughs> so I went for a week, so I got a little... You got a little... Dan Mom is in me. <laughs> and I stopped. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's, if it's for a wedding, I guess. Right, like you know, in a case, it's not a lifestyle Like, thing. people... Like, legit do it. Yeah, as a lifestyle. Like, that's a form of their relaxation. Like, yeah. fucking meditate or something. Yeah. <laughs> like, people mm-hmm. legit. Like, when I was going in there, mm-hmm. and it was just, like, so bad. Like, my first day, I'm like, hey, you know, like, I want a week. And, you know, people come out, like, grown men. Mm-hmm. But laugh. Like, can you know, can Like, can mom call her? And I'm like, you know, it, people are buying that you're really that damn. Yeah. I guess it's an addiction, I'm assuming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, I know. Um, and I'm like, it's like you are so brown and you live in Rochester. Like, that. Mm. Like, people know. People know yeah. you went tanning. Like, <laughs> people right. don't believe that you're right. tan like that all year round. Like, it, we just 
got the sun right. two <laughs> yeah. weeks ago. Because <laughs> right, we, I mean, seriously, like April was like all rain. It's only been the last couple weeks. It, it was. We had a really, rain, really rain, late yeah. winter. Mm-hmm. Like it's been raining, like sleeting, we, not too long. Ago. We literally got the sun two weeks ago, like, like at the beginning of May. Out, tan. I'm like, you look ridiculous. Right. I want to say and that. for the guys in our audience, what do you wear in a tanning booth? <laughs> What do I wear? Yeah. Oh, I wear um just my underwear. Just your underwear? Okay. Yeah, some people wear, like, their babies. I'm like, I'm just, I used to just come from the gym. I'm not bringing all this shit in there. Uh-huh. I just wear, like, my underwear. Okay, so, like... My panties. Okay, no, is that, I mean... <laughs> for the guys, there yeah. you go. But, like, is it... I've, I've never been. Uh, like, is it is it, like, a small room? Is it, like, yeah, a... Yeah, it's not, like, big enough for, like, a tanning bed and then, like, a little space mm. for you to get you. And it, so what do you, like... And there's somewhere you can stand up in. Trust me, there's a lot of variety. I just do the basic because I'm, like, I'm fucking making this a lifestyle. How much, how much does something like that cost? I'm just curious. Or, I or... bought... You can buy, like, visits and stuff. Um, I bought a week, which was, like, 20 bucks. Uh-huh. And... So a week, like, you went, like, every day for a week or yeah. something like that? Yeah, like a week, like you legit have to go every day because or else you'll lose days. But you can buy like visits, so mm-hmm. you can go whenever, and that's good for like a year. Oh. Okay. But there's like packages where it's like. It's oh, I'm pretty sure they sell you on a package. Yeah, okay. And of course, if you're gonna get a better bed, which is like stand up or whatever, I'm like it's the same basic where you lay down. Yeah. It all works the same, people. Oh man. <laughs> I see, and I don't. I guess. Well, I mean, I would never do that because I'm not good with the sun. I'm not good with. But I'm like, what would I wear? I mean. <laughs> Because if I wore my boxer briefs, it would, I would have a tan line on my legs, so I would have to wear a brief. Or you could wear nothing. Or oh, natural. I don't know but guys who go on new and put a sock on their wiener <laughs> so it doesn't get burned. Now, do you, like, do you, I'm pretty sure the people who work there have to wipe it down, but, like, do you, yes. do you get oh, it? I wipe it down. Oh, okay. They wipe it down, and then they have to put up, like, a sign that says, this has been sanitized. Do I not, just like the yeah. sign, Clark. employees must wash it. Yeah. Do I necessarily, no, yeah. You I, show up with the Clorox wipes. Do my own <laughs> thing. Let me just make sure that I don't trust you, you high school <laughs> student who doesn't care about being here. And yeah. all of the workers, tan, because we get free tanning, I think. Oh. And I think that's probably a requirement. I can only for imagine. Tanning. Yeah, I can only you imagine the vapid. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the brightest of the bright, let oh. me tell you. Like, I was a nerd working at Radio Shack, so I can only imagine yeah, the people the, who work in a... The brightest and, of the bright. I mean, they're nice, but I'm like, I can't have any more of a conversation <laughs> with you. Let's just put my name in the system. You know, you and should you got to put your ID now. They used, didn't use to Because, actually, like, I had been... Oh, because you're over 18? I, oh, I don't know if that's... I think just because people were probably using somebody else's name, if they have it, you know? Oh, okay, I got you. Because, like, I would have done that. Like, my, that was, if my friend wanted to, I'd be like, yeah, let's fucking use my name. I don't care. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, but, okay. Yeah, they're really cracking down over there. Cracking down. No free tan. Yeah. No tan for you. You no free tan. All right, so let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, guys, this is Cordero Uloa, co-founder of the Living Lane Podcast Network. Before you start this LLPN podcast, I wanted to show you listeners out there what else we have to offer here on the network. If TV and movies tickle your ear pussy, then check out Real Chat with Seth Parker, Alex Chittenden, and Cordero Uloa. They cover news, casting rumors, trailers, and reviews, all with the excitement you'd expect out of a bunch of pop culture nerds. Just visit www.watchsomething.podmean.com. You can also get to know Chris Cologne and Kristen Montrollo as they get to know each other on Two Strangers, One Podcast. Listen as these guys talk about celebrity gossip and reality TV, as well as interviews with George Christick, the creator of popular Disney cartoon Megas XLR, and Mike Zapsik and Ming Chen of AMC's Comic Book Men. Look for them at www.twostrangersonepodcast.com. If music is what you're looking for, check out The Breakdown, which features members of the Live and Lame Podcast Network talking about the artists, the tunes, and the albums that they enjoy and grew up with. You can check that out at www.rockhardpodharder.podbean.com. Interested in astrology, numerology? Join Joey Fox, Carrie Fox, and Foxy Dean in the Fox Den, where they talk about life, kids, and family, all infused with the brand of humor you've come to expect from us here at the LLPN. Enter the Fox Den at www.thefoxden.podbean.com. And last but not least, check out the granddaddy that started it all, Living Lame, featuring Dwight Graham, Cordero Uloa, Joey and Carrie Fox, Seth Parker, Nick Doty, and Megan Phelps. Join the Lames every week as they talk about whatever the hell they want, from comics, games, and headlines to weekly segments such as Lame of the Week, Nude News featuring Mike Hawk, and FML with Seth Parker and Megan Phelps. You can prowl the lameness of the interwebs with the Lames at www.livinglame.podbean.com, and you can follow us on Twitter at at livinglame. You can find all of our podcasts on iTunes and Stitcher Internet Radio, which is a free app available to both Android and iOS users. You can also listen through your standard phone browser by adding forward slash mobile to the end of any of our URLs. 
You can also find and like the pages for all of our podcasts on Facebook, as well as the Live and Lame Podcast Network page, which is the headquarters for all the Live and Lame Network podcasts on Facebook. Please don't forget to hover over the like button and click show news feed so you can see all of our updates. All of us here at the network would like to thank you for your continued listenership. Now please enjoy this Live and Lame Podcast Network podcast. Click and Hit, enhancing the experience for all recreational smokers. Click and Hit is a one-handed portable vaporizer. This smoking pipe has a compact four-stage design, complete with a built-in, windproof, contained refillable torch lighter. The large burn chamber holds your stash of legal herb or pipe tobacco. Click the button to ignite and inhale as usual. When you are done, put it back in your pocket for later. Smoke anytime with the touch of a button. No more carrying around grinders and tins. Leave the pipe, rolling papers, and even your lighter at home. The Click and Hit cordless vaporizer is no bigger than a normal cigar, making it the world's smallest and most discreet vaporizer. It's perfect for use in small places or shared rooms. It's efficient getting five to eight drawers from your packed chamber. It's affordable at just $19.95 each. Buy three and the shipping is free. Buy four and you get the fifth one free. Visit www.click the letter N hit.com. That's click and hit.com. And now for listeners of Two Strangers One Podcast, you can use promo code STRANGERS and receive 10% off your purchase at clickandhit.com. That's promo code STRANGERS for 10% off your purchase. And we're back. And um, so. Uh, for some reason, uh, since we were talking about tans, and for some reason this pops into my head, The Rock, who recently just did that movie, Pain and Gain. Which I hear is great. Oh, it is? I heard it was. Because that's a Michael Bay movie. Yeah, now I that heard we're it talking was about really, like, action but it was also really funny. Oh, okay. Like, they made it a comedy as well. Oh, okay. I, I, I want I, like, I to see it, but I'm not going to pay to see it. Like, I'll watch it on yeah. DVD or something like that. Um, he had just gotten out of, I mean, this is like a week old, uh, hernia surgery. Oh, yeah, I did read that, yeah. Because he tweeted, like, to his fans. He must have tore this shit, I can only imagine. That's what I'm saying, like, like, what you, like, it's just, like his whole intestinal lining sticking out. Because <laughs> the guy's nothing but muscle. Yeah. Like, you know, and how, it. he must have really pushed himself. I mean, because, I mean, don't, I know he's been in a bunch of movies, I mean, they're already advertising Fast and Furious 6. Yeah, I know. G.I. Joe, Pain and Gain. Um, yeah, he's making bank this summer. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, you know, he's, he's done a lot of movies, but, um, you know, the, he, he had tweeted a picture, like, right, not right after the surgery, but to let his fans know he's okay. He had on a Superman shirt, <laughs> and he's, like, he's kind of, like, doing a Something weird flex. And he's in the hospital bed, but he's flexing. I'm like, dude, don't flex. Relax, relax. <laughs> he, just, he just had hernia surgery. It's covered, it's covered. Um, so that kind of fits in. We were talking about Michael Bay and wrestling, yeah. that, that um, he had, he was recovering was from actually, hernia surgery. A friend of mine saw the movie, and they said it was, like, really good. It was, like, funny, and also, you know, it was just, like, this action band. Mm-hmm. Like guys beating the shit out of each other type thing, um, but I guess I heard it correctly. It was based on true story. I okay. didn't know. That. I think I heard. Yeah, I mean, I think so I don't know the original. I story, think that when they say based on a true story, it's like loosely, loosely based, you know. <laughs> Like and then, and then they really story. Yeah. Michael Bay doesn't usually make based on <laughs> yeah. true story movies. I'm sure there was something, but I don't know the original story, what happened. Yeah. But I thought that was interesting. I was like, oh. Yeah, so The Rock just got out. It's funny that we can kind of tie everything together. The Rock was the Rock's recovering. recovering from pain. And the, the nerdy part was he was wearing a Superman shirt when he tweeted <laughs> that picture. Um, mm. I had seen a, okay, and once again, this this is kind of old because I thought we were, you know, recording last week was kind of delayed. Um, there was a reunion for Wayne's World. I want to say it was the 25th oh, yeah. anniversary. Yeah, it was something, some. Because it sounds like an 88 or something. If, if it came out in 88, it would be like something 25. Number, yeah. So, um. There. I didn't know they had a few. Dana Carvey and Mike, Mike Myers. Because they said, wow, they came together for the reunion. And were. But, um, but I mean. If I'm not mistaken, because um, Dana Carvey hosted Saturday Night Live, um, I would say last year, and, and and Mike Myers came on and they did they well, did a Wayne's, Wayne's World. World. So maybe that's when they saw. But they were saying I didn't know they ever had a few. Yeah, I didn't know. I guess so. Then I ran into it because I was interested. Because uh-huh. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? Like, so I guess it was just over. Okay, after Wayne's World, and I forget it all because I did read it like mm-hmm. a week ago. Something with them, they wanted to make another one, like Myers wanted, some of his ideas were thrown out, and then they just never ended up making it. Oh, okay. Okay, and then on to Austin Powers, Dr. Evil kind of resembled Dana Carvey's um, impersonation of Lauren Michaels, I guess. So, and Dana was like, well, you're working on a character of mine, and then I guess the few, like, I guess, not like they fought, but maybe like went back and forth, and they stopped talking. 
Wow, okay. I didn't, I didn't know. know that. And then they're like, well, they came together for this reunion. Yeah, because I was wondering, because, like, okay, Mike Myers, you know, between um, the Shrek movies and Austin Power movies, Mike Myers is straight. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, you know, you can have Eddie Murphy doing voices. Like, Dana Carvey, who's right, like you couldn't who have owned it. the early <laughs> 90s with all the characters well, that he's doing. You could have bring in Dana Carvey to yeah, do so a voice to, or, 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 or in, put him in one of the Austin Power movies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, oh, oh you, you know, you could have freaking Mini Me and all these other, you know, people <laughs> come back. You know, they, they had the same guys in like all the Robert Ulrich, the number yeah, yeah. two, and, and Mini Me, all and, and the, guy, you know, uh, the guy who played Basil, whatever. You know, you could have all these guys, and you can't bring fucking Dana yeah. Carvey, but I, didn't, yeah, I guess was, there was a few. That was the few, yeah. yeah they you just weren't talking. You throw him a freaking bone somebody, here. Somebody would like to get some freaking bone. And then I forget, something with, like, the director for Wayne's World back in the day, like, when the feud started, one of them was, like, friends with him or something, and that's why, like, I'm guessing Dana Carvey or somebody, uh-huh. and then that's why Mike Myers' ideas were thrown out, I don't know, yeah. I could be mixing it up how it is, but mm-hmm. it was something when they were gonna go make the next one, everybody wasn't on the same page. And, and you know, Dana Carvey was real sick, he, he, had, right. he had, he'd gotten, I forgot, I, and I said I wish, I want to say it was, it was something, it was either his kidneys or his liver, yeah, I yeah, forgot yeah. exactly, but he was really sick right. for a while, and, you Maybe know. Maybe that even. Yeah, but I mean, like, like, we could squash the book. Right, here we go, man. Go ahead. You want to read Double it? Jackpot. What is it? It is a self-published book by Christopher Cologne. Chris Cologne? Smells good to me. But- <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. That broke that fucking cold little exterior. He's like, hee hee But it is spelled C-O-L-O-N. Him punny. But... <laughs> Double Jackpot is a book about a comic book artist, Eric, who is in a loveless relationship with a materialistic I feel you, Eric. Lynette. I, 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 oh, fucking. Are you oh, sure God. I didn't write this? <laughs> uh, I, I smell sounds hauntingly familiar. He starts cheating on his girlfriend with a more creatively, su- sorry, creatively supportive woman, Nadia. Oh, I, I gotta meet her. Where's the Nadia? There's your summer girlfriend. Summer Nadia is Nadia. Nadia? Yeah, I think Nadia spelled with an A. All right. Both Lynette and uh, Nadia play the double jackpot, the largest payout in lotto history, much like the recent Powerball. Both girls play his birth date as the winning re- as the winning numbers. Eric is now stuck between two of the country's richest women. Who will he choose? It's not that simple. This is a clever fucking idea, yeah, man. Is. Look at her, fucking. She's impressed. I am. Summer. She got some summer reading. <laughs> Christopher Cologne smells real lovely with an original idea. This is. I've never heard this before. I haven't either. This is a self-published book, much in the indie spirit as Kev's Clerks. Oh, you don't even need to name check me. This is just a good idea. You could stand on your own, man. You don't even have to be like, hey, remember Clerks? This is nothing like that. <laughs> this is way more original than Clerks. This is a good idea, man. Why didn't I think of this? I need something to read. This book is part of the Comic Books Heavy Metal Video Games Trilogy Book 2, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, coming soon. Right on, man. It's part of a trilogy. This is the first part. Way to write, man. He's seeking a literary agent. Motherfuckers, anybody out there? There ain't no literary agents listening to this show, I assure you, sure. Sure. I assure you, sure. But somebody know a literary agent? Hook a motherfucker up! Chris Cologne come up with an original idea. I should tell Raskin. That's a good fucking idea, to be so honest too. with you. That's a fucking rom-com right there. Megan, get Raskin on the phone. <laughs> Isn't it possible to get Raskin on the phone? No? Yeah. I want to run it past him, man. I want to, And if it happens, I get a taste, Chris Cologne. I get a, a whiff, if you will. The book could also be ordered on www. L-U-L-U dot com. That's Lulu dot com. I understand that. I just want to spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> Normally one says that that spells it. Still, Lulu dot com. What is that? Do you know what it is? I don't know. All right. The book could also be ordered on www dot Lulu dot com. Search for Double Jackpot Christopher Cologne. A paperback version of the book is $15 and a PDF file is only five bucks. Five dollars is yeah. insanely inexpensive. Fifteen is not even that bad for a hard for a paperback version. No, this is a million dollar idea right here. Like a, a fucking a movie about a dude who fucking is stuck between two chicks, both of who play his birthday and win the lottery. Come on, I come! Like I it. can see that trailer. Chris Cologne is on to something. Nobody else can smell it but me. I'll read it. Thank you. I'm gonna make that smelly joke. I all. know you're trying to get me to laugh again. It worked once. <laughs> 
Double Jackpot is a self-published book by Chris Cologne, man. It's the first book in his comic books, heavy metal video games trilogy. Book two, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, should be coming out soon. Get all the information. Chris Cologne, like a motherfucker. I and will his totally book, read this. Double Jackpot. I'm serious. I'm going to recommend that to fucking Raskin. That's, how is that not a movie? You know what I'm saying? This could be a sexy movie. You could do an R-rated version. There could be nudie in it. And you could sell them fucking both chicks. Maybe a little penetration. Maybe a butthole shot. No butthole, no care. I would like to formally apologize to Christopher Cologne. Right no, now, sex but... sells. <laughs> Chris Cologne will appreciate that. He's like, thanks for throwing a few buttholes in there, man. Don't forget to check out Two Strangers One Podcast.net, your one stop resource for everything show related. You can find links to subscribe to us on iTunes or on Stitcher. You could also find links to buy my book, Double Jackpot, on Two Strangers One Podcast.net. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool, and fuck you, I'm out.